All right. Day five. Mm -hmm. On the boundary waters. And I'm going to try to film. I got nothing to hold my camera but my hand. I'm going to try to film one of these portages. This is a short one and fairly level. So here we go. Never mind the huffing and puffing. this canoe on your shoulders and I'd say it weighs 45 50 pounds maybe 60 when it has soaking wet life jackets in it and the shoulder pads are wet and right now I can balance it with one hand but you hit the rough parts of the trail you gotta get two hands on it. Little rocky aware. Little rocky over here. Yeah, these are tricky. Tricky. First time across, so we knew which one to take. There's the water. Turn it off. I gotta get in the water. All right, we're across the portage, and it's beginning to rain again. Just because. <laughs> 
A little duck out there. I think it's a redhead. Oh, fish. Fish on. I didn't catch a single fish up here. So I really didn't do much fishing. Oh, there's a bunch of them over there. They all popped up. There must be a lot of fish in here. Look at that. They're all, they all went under. Oh, this one's back up. They stay under a long time. Oh, oh, there they're popping up. I don't see no fish. They had the same luck I did. All right, we gotta paddle across this body of water, this lake. And then we're back at the truck. Not the semi truck, our friend's truck. We're heading in town to get a hot meal and get cleaned up. Okay, so I wanted to do a little kind of disclaimer about this canoe trip um, after we had taken it. And we went through Eli, Minnesota. And you can see the map here. That is the Disappointment Lake map. And Disappointment Lake is right here. Outfielder was Eli Outfitting, <laughs> and uh, they provide you with this map. Um, we went with just the canoe package, which provides you with a canoe, a life vest, and a paddle, and one map per canoe. <laughs> two paddles, two life jackets per canoe. Um, the trip itself. Uh, we took the most difficult route through that area of the Boundary Waters, which was hindsight probably not the best idea. But so we started here. We traveled through here. And we traveled up through here. Up through here. Up through here. our longest portage it was 292 rods in through here down through here and we keep going down 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 through here through here through here and here now this is where it got tricky on us we had this is where you take out. I had the map folded. We couldn't see this portion, but we had it marked with a big X. We also had the route through here marked with a line. The last day it rained, as you saw in the video, it stormed. And uh, we were still out on this lake, Lake Guam. Um, small craft advisories, high winds, thunder and lightning so we were trying to stay close to the bank but right after we made our final footage which was right here I got the map out and I had to refold it to get to this page and the rain washed all the information off my map so we didn't know for sure where to go we knew it was on this lake and we knew it was to the right from where we portaged. So we came out around here and we ended up all the way over here. Looking for where we were, we were to take out when that area was over here and you had to go through this narrow channel. Now what saved us was this homemade map. <clears throat> it's just gonna be hard to see. But you can see where it comes up here, and it says out. You can see that line goes through. It looks like it's going through land and then back down. So I compared that uh, to this map, and I could kind of see, okay, 
it, it must be here and then through there. So we finally, um, we were able to contact, we had handheld radios and I got a hold of my friend and uh, we put out on this beach, but it was a resort and it was still, I mean, storming bad. We gave him the name of the resort and he came and picked us up. But the one thing I want to mention is if you want to take this trip and it's more than a day or two, you better be able to read a map. And this map is fairly detailed, but not as detailed as what it probably should have been. And you're going to need a compass. And if you can't use a compass and read a topo map, um, I was in the military, so I I did all right until all my markings were gone, <laughs> and I I knew where I was at on the map, but I didn't know where to go. Um, but if you if you're not skilled with map reading and using the compass, you're going to want to have some type of GPS. And my friend had a watch uh, that was GPS that uh, he could link to his phone and he could see his exact location at any time, which was helpful, very helpful. Um, but yeah, just know that it's not just a... a easy breezy canoe you know paddle float it's a lot of work it's tiring and you know there's some danger involved but i still had fun it still feels like quite the accomplishment so i don't think i'll ever do it again <laughs> but it feels good to know that we did it.